bringing the people behind our food to life. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to accomplish. All I knew originally is we want to grow our own food. We don't want to go to the store before there was organics and have to buy pesticide-laden uh, uh, produce that's pumped with uh, synthetic fertilizers. We didn't want to participate in that particular uh, Hegem I mean, let's, let's face it, 56% of every dollar that the government gets goes to war. 56 cents out of every dollar. We did not want to support that, period. We do not. Now, as older and having been living and raising children and having, having to live in the society, one does not have a choice. But at that original era as being young, independent uh, adult, being able to see that one does not want to support this constant war on the, whether it's the, uh, you don't make a war on poverty, you provide resources so people get an education so they can have a, a different kind of potential uh, use of their lives in future. Maybe they want to be a nurse or a doctor. Maybe they want to be an electrician or an architect. Maybe they want to be a, a uh, a public uh, uh, reporter for the common good. You know, all those things, give them the opportunity to do that. That seems to me to be uh, how you uh, do deal with poverty, is by changing your attitude about what it means. And, and the same thing has to do with the, 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 the wars that are constantly destroying this place. Uh, what does gardening have to do with this? What is, what, the garden gives one an opportunity to face life and death every day because you're always pulling weeds and you're always killing plants. Because you're always making decisions about are, those, are we going to let those rodents live or are we going to kill them? Are we going to let all those uh, yellow jackets and hornets live or are we going to reduce their populations? The same thing has to do with plants. You plant a tree, you end up pruning it. You have to figure out are you going to cut off those limbs? Are you going to let it flower? That we are involved in how we interact with the biosphere. And that is in itself a profound issue that you experience in the garden. You experience it every day. You experience whether the, with, with the uh, dragonfly lands on your hand, whether the bird comes over and looks in the eye and starts talking to you or singing a song, whether the, we walk out and you see all sorts of new pollinators you've never seen that have, in a field you've been working for 15 years, you find a couple of pollinators that were never there before. You find new crosses and lettuces that never happened. You find that there's things happening in the garden that if you're lucky, you can get an insight and look into, but otherwise you don't even know. The garden is not just the garden. The garden is a metaphor for having a place to develop uh, an ethical way to understand life and to make a life that is ethical. So that garden is a much more profound thing. And I see that one would like to encourage everybody to garden. And it's always astonishing when you look at local regions where the wild species are disappearing, that the towns don't have endangered species garden or encourage gardening because gardening has not been considered of really high value. Well, of course, if you live in a city and you have no access to land, what are you going to garden? You can garden in a small container. But if you really want to garden, you need some land. And land's hard to get. It's expensive. So gardening becomes the privilege of the rich and the connected rather than something that everybody has a common right to and that everybody should have a piece of ground where they can garden. And many countries and many societies have actually that circumstance because they recognize that gardening is not just uh, growing food. It's an activity that you share with your family and your community. It's an ability to have soil nurture the miracle of life that gives you tremendously beautiful tomatoes. You know, uh, when we started growing tomatoes, I knew about cherry tomatoes, paste tomatoes, and sliced salad tomatoes. I knew about three times of tomatoes. One year we grew 200 kinds of tomatoes and we saved the seeds of all, all of them. And then what we find out? We found out that there were white tomatoes and striped tomatoes and there were tiny tomatoes and big tomatoes and some were would rotted after two days and some would store for four months. You know, and we didn't know anything about what it meant to be involved in food, agriculture, gardening, and in, in terms of we grew up as urban kids where it was in the market and packaged in a packer and you got it and you cooked it. You didn't even know how to cook, right? You, you, the thing was, anyway, there's a lot of growth we have to need in this world, in this society.